Let's talk about heart disease, number one killer of men and women. What happens in heart disease? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of heart disease, but the ones that I want to call your attention to are the ones that are quite common and, you know, and that affect a lot of people. That's blockages of blood vessels that impair blood flow. So you don't get good blood flow. That leads to heart attack when the, uh, when the vessels are narrowed or can lead to stroke or it can lead to peripheral arterial disease. This is something where, you know, you don't get good blood flow to your legs really hard to walk, you know, take a walk in the park or walk in the mall or walk to the store, you, you'll get a cramp because you don't have enough blood flow. You got to sit down and rest. Peripheral arterial disease, when it gets bad enough, you know, your, your skin will break down. You'll get a wound, an arterial ulcer that can get infected. And it's a common cause of amputation in people with vascular disease. Worse, if, you, uh, if you're a smoker because of the vasoconstriction, your blood vessels are clamped down. All right. So what could we actually do to grow blood vessels? I just told you about cancer, cut off the blood supply. Why don't we grow blood vessels? Well, guess what? There's research on foods that can grow blood vessels too. Now, um, uh, by the way, I wanna, I'm gonna come back to this for a second, but I'm gonna remind myself now to tell you why one side is not gonna screw up the other side. Barley has something called beta-D-glucan in it. It's a natural chemical. You can make pasta out of it actually, barley pasta, and it's been studied in the lab. And guess what? When you feed animals that have um, uh, blockages in their heart, um, pasta made with barley that has beta-D-glucan, beta-D-glucan stimulates angiogenesis, helps the body grow blood vessels, not to tumors, only to where it needs it in the heart, for example. And this has been shown and you look into the research study, I'm not going to have to take the time to walk through the study with you. Just look at the bar, the, the bar charts um, and you can kind of see in the orange circle that black is where the uh, uh, mice uh, who actually had, were suffering from poor blood flow in the heart, when they ate the pasta made with beta-glucan, their uh, blood vessels actually got more dense, they grew more blood vessels, uh, and actually they got better blood flow as well. So again, food growing blood vessels. Let me show you another one. A uh, fruit peel, an apple peel, could be a peel of an apricot or a pear, contains a natural molecule called ursolic acid. Now, what does ursolic acid do? Ursolic acid actually helps the body produce exactly what I showed you spinach and beets did at the very beginning. It produces nitric oxide, nitrogen, okay? And when it produces nitric oxide, ursolic acid, what did I tell you it does? It lowers blood pressure by dilating, widening the blood vessels. In this case, nitric oxide does something more. It stimulates stem cells that are in our bone marrow and our stem cells are left over from the time we were in our mom's womb. So when our chin and our ears and our liver and our face was all developing, um, it was all developed with stem cells starting at day five, all the way to nine months. When we were born, we had extra stem cells. And it's kind of like when you finish painting a room, you buy an extra can of paint so you don't want to run out. But when we were born, we had extra stem cells, didn't want to run out our bodies. So we had extra stem cells. Those stem cells, when we were born, got, it's kind of like a you know can of paint. You put the cap on, you put it in the garage. Well, the stem cells that are overages, extras at the very end before we're born, get packed up and put into our bone marrow. Ursolic acid and nitric oxide call out those stem cells when we need to repair ourselves and regenerate from the inside out. And in fact, we've studied this in the lab. Uh, this is actually what we call an ischemic limb. Remember I told you peripheral arterial disease, no blood flow in the, in the leg. And here is an animal that's been fed uh, fruit peel. And you can kind of see three weeks later, we've grown back the blood supply, all right? Foods as medicine, in this experiment's case, showing you that you can stimulate the revascularization, no bypass, no stent. And this is not in a human, this isn't a lab animal. Uh, and and ursolic acid has also been studied in humans and will do something very similar uh, as well. And these are stem cells that are doing. So these are, um, uh, androgenesis stimulating foods. Um, and I wanted to tell you, so if you give a cancer uh, starver, like a, a anti-androgenic food, like a tomato, um, we, are you gonna cut off the blood supply to your leg? Nope, Hot heart, nope. Because your body's health defenses can block the effect of foods only to a certain point. So it's kind of like a, a lawn, if you were the, a landscaper, you're responsible for a lawn, you need the perfect layer of grass if it's too high, you'll mow it down. That's anti-angiogenic, cancer-starving food. But if you have a bald patch where you need more blood vessels and you need to put grass seed on to grow the blood vessels up, 
Um, that's exactly what these angiogenesis stimulating foods do. And if they grow too tall, guess what? Your body will mow down the overage so you won't actually get into trouble. So that's how food, like medicines that I've helped to develop, we can punch through the body's defenses because medicines are, they're the blunt instrument. They're like the, they're, they're taking the cannon out. Foods are kinder, gentler ways to help our body's health defenses work. 